Guys, can you hear me on Kickstarter Live? We should be going live right about now. Uh, fingers crossed. I'm going to hop over to my lobby top. Say hello <laughs> to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what they expected. <laughs> ah, right. Do you know, I've just realized my laptop's locked. Hold on, guys. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold on. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere. <laughs> So I'm very much hoping that we are live. We are live. We have funded is the most important thing. Boom. Oh my God. Can you believe it? Funded straight away. <sighs> Months of, uh, of hard work paid off. Let us see. So thank see. you all for that. Yes. Thank much you. appreciate it. Very much. So while I get the chat open, let's have a look. We are live. I Hopefully you guys can all see me. I'm waiting for this to and catch here. up. That would be a... I'm pretty sure we a can. Bonus. <laughs> uh, stay tuned. Yes, congrats. Hey, yeah. Hello, 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 Adventure and as. And how are we looking? How are we sounding? Let us know, guys. Can you see us and hear us? Oh my God, Josh Worley into the good place. Hello, salut, bonjour. Congratulations. Thank you so much, guys. So I'm just going to say hello to all you guys before I worry about us. Hello, Thierry. Hello, Sac Sacred Roach. Hello, Leo Bosella. I'm going to say that so wrong. I will say right now, Leo will be live after we're done. <laughs> so anybody who's looking for a uh, French live, some uh, dance, some questions, after our live here, we will have another live from the Paris office where they're just going mad. They're going to be updating all the stretch goals, putting all the, the new plans in place. Now we've got funded, so... It's going to be a good evening. Fun, don't stop. We're in a good mission. We're, yes, we're in a good mission. We're in a good place. I, I, someone wrote we're in a good place, but someone else wrote mission, and my head just went. You're confusing him, guys. Push. Keep G it up. Game hoarder, welcome. This is so good. We're. I don't know if you know this, no. but Kickstarter, whenever the privacy policies changed, changed it so that unless you, hello, Errol Vern. Oh. Hello, sir. I got a little self. Oh, I missed it. I'll show you in a second. Guess all the fun chat. Uh, oh, Richard Harrison is in chat. Ah, uh, yes. Hey, Dad. Daddy Harrison <laughs> is in chat. Hello, Daddy Harrison. You did not sneak in there, did you? <laughs> oh, he did indeed. Look, Dad's, Dad's watching. Dad's watching. Oh, man. Oh, he's really proud. <laughs> huzzah, huzzah. Hello, Olivier. Nice to see you. Olivier Phil, one of our sculptors, is in the chat. Show Olivier some love, oh, guys. Yeah. Uh, the board game Spotlight just became a backer. Thank you, team at Board Game Spotlight. That's awesome. An amazing Facebook page. If you guys haven't seen the Board Game Spotlight, really, really fantastic group to get up to date knowledge on, on Kickstarters and games. Uh, <laughs> David Verley says, My bank said no. <laughs> I know that pain. <laughs> but we said yes. So come on. Yay, we're backed. Um, so it's just, there's a lot of chat. We have 775 people watching us right right now. Ian, welcome to the good place. You just became back of 703. Oh, wow. So what's the plan for tonight? The plan tonight is to smash some stretch goals. Boom. Yeah. yeah. So here well, we're here in the UK. Ben. Um, is frantically get it, going to be getting some updates together. Steve, game developer Steve, um, is on the comments, the Kickstarter comments, while Leo and the guys in the Paris office will be getting all your stretch goals and things ready as we start to smash through some of those. And Leo will be live when we wrap up here in about 45 minutes to an hour or so. Hello, Stuart. Stuart. Stuart's in the Gold Coast and really wanted us to move the campaign forward about 12 hours so he could have it in normal hours. What time is it with oh. you, Stuart? Because it can't be, it must be an ungodly hour in the Gold Coast. We're pleased you are dedicated to stick around, stick by and watch. Well, it's 5 a.m. Oh, you poor guy. 5 a.m. tomorrow, oh, right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> tomorrow, that, that's, tomorrow? Yeah. I've got it in the future. 5 18 a.m. You're in the future, man. How, how are things in the future? Yeah, say hello to future me. The Irish man says, my God, as is looking good. You should adjust your set. You must be on a thin resolution because I don't think that's true. Yeah, yeah, just... just uh. <laughs> Whatever monitor you've got, if you could send it to me, the Irishman, that would be swell because lo I'd love to have a few of those in the office. Uh, <laughs> as is hiding behind the chat. Looks great. I'm not hiding behind the chat. This is good. Wow. Guys, one thing we haven't spoken about, and I can't believe none of you have mentioned this. Do you like our new brickwork? Do you like all the money that, that we put into this amazing, uh, this, this new built wall that we had built? We had to shrink the studio by about three inches to put the bricks up, but- They didn't let me out of the office till it was finished. 3D printed <laughs> wall, says Erwin. Yeah, this is resin. This is hand painted by Seb Levine. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah, we need some suggestions. I really want to get some shelves up here so we can stick some, but then when we're doing Let's Plays, the person that sits here will be smashing their head off it. So, yeah. We need, Hello, Bronson Murphy, backer 733. Welcome to the good place, sir. If any of you are listening right now and are about to hit that back button, 
set your Kickstarter profile to public and then we can welcome you properly. <laughs> so if you want to, if you want to. We've got Swedish uh, Swedish Vacker, Swedish Backer here. Hello, Matthias. Very, very welcome to you, sir. Yes, Brazil is expensive to ship to in general. Unfortunately, it is a tough thing. And Boris, welcome. You're in a good place. This is great. What are we up to? My Kickstarter is just going... We're up to 749 backers, 117,000 reach. I'm going to open up my very sneaky, very private little document here, which has the stretch goals on it. Because I obviously the guys can only put art up so far. I can tell you guys are ready. We are nearing stretch goals. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are. It's going to be a very small amount of time before we start unlocking stretch goals. You guys better get ready. As usual, if I can get my... There we go. Oh, I realize what you meant. I'm hiding behind the chat. I am hiding behind the chat, aren't I? Let me, let me scoot over. Is that, there we go. Is that? Come closer. Come, come, come closer. We, me and Ed will have a, Sorry. is that, is that what you meant? Is that, yeah, there we go. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. So as ever up here, if you click the Q and A button and um, leave a question. And before we finish up from the UK office, we'll go through all your questions and we'll answer them all best we can. If you look in the FAQ, there's already 23 frequently asked questions. We, pl <laughs> we planned ahead a little bit. <laughs> we, yeah, welcome hedge, ham hedge hamster. What other kind of hamsters do you get? Cage hamster, wheel hamster, ball hamster. Blondie hamsters. Blondie hamsters. They're very rare. Well, Hedge Hamster, backer 746, you're in a good place. Very, very welcome to you. Um, only partially obscured now yet. You, you guys, you don't want to see all of me. That's just going to hurt your televisions. Um, just focus on me. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Orlando, the Technicolored, backer 750. You're very much welcome to this good place, sir. I have a question for you, actually, and a question for everyone at home as well. What do you think? Do you think we should really run with the good place thing? Do you think we should make like a club? Get some badges. Remember, like, remember, you used to have tree houses as a kid, and you used to have passwords Ooh, to get in and stuff. The mythic tree house. The mythic good place tree house. Ooh, so uh, we're into it. Where we can kind of like so, and we'll have secret rooms at conventions where only if you're a good place community member can you find out the secret location. Ooh, People, t-shirts, t-shirts is a thing. Where's Leo Dean? He's in Paris frantically writing um, um, updates, which are going to be out very shortly. Okay. The, f the first one's come out already, actually. Um, and Leo will be live in about an hour's time. So we'll have a, a French kind of French English update from Leo and the Paris office as well. Uh, the Mythic Circle oh, is... Oh. <laughs> Lars jumped in with the question, is O'Reilly Irish? They are. Yes, O'Reilly is uh, an Irish hero. Have you noticed any details on O'Reilly? If you guys look really close on, on the mini of O'Reilly, have you guys actually seen anything? We're gonna we're gonna share. It's very. It's you might not catch it, oh, but if you it. look if you look on his card <laughs> art, you're gonna notice something very special about O'Reilly that oh. really makes him different from other heroes. Yeah, I won't say anything until you spot it. Yeah, we're you spot it. Um, as <laughs> I, I hope we see an Aussie hero in the unlocks. You guys are gonna have to just keep keep track of what's coming. We have a huge huge amount of stretch goals to come. Oh yeah. A huge amount. Um, Very excited for them all. Um, Jake will absolutely be doing updates. Jake is actually going to be writing updates this evening. And we will have a couple of big updates coming out tonight. One about the gameplay, where we're going to kind of give you guys more information. Obviously down below, there's the rule book that you can see, the beta rule book. This is very much in development, but the rule book will tie in directly to the videos you see with Beast of War and with Trick Track. But we prepared that demo for Essen, really, yes. which is a month ago now. Um, so we've been developing the game, or Ed, I haven't been developing the game. <laughs> Ed, yes, I have. Um, along with Stu, with Josh, with Steve, with Jake. Yeah, um, yeah. They've been developing the game for the past month, so it has evolved. And over the course of this 10-day campaign, we will share updates with you guys about the rules, about what changes are coming, what ones we have planned for the future. Because we're going to continue to evolve right busters, not just through the campaign, but for the months afterwards as well. This is going to be something, again, where we want your feedback, your thoughts and ideas. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, as your Beast of War gameplay and your trailer were both exceptional, you have won a lot of backers. Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> if I'm honest, like we, for us, having the support of the community and all the feedback that we've had on the, on the trailer, especially, and the gameplay has been fantastic, really, really heartwarming. And people ask the question, how much did you spend on the trailer? Like, <laughs> how wild was it? And it's like, it was all done in-house. That trailer is 100% Mythic, uh, Mythic Games. That's, that's all us. I will give a big shout out to Stefan Gantes, who's our art director, and also to Fabian Delarue, who is our main animator. He is just an amazing guy, and he's not for sale. You guys can't have him. Uh, he is stunning. Uh, phenomenal. 
Um, so we're up to 860 viewers. We're up to, oh, I don't want to refresh my page actually. Let me refresh my page and see where we're up to. I think we're going to be hitting a stretch goal momentarily. Guys, as soon as I'm telling, I'll tell you guys right now. Okay, do you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump the gun because oh. it's, it's what I like to do, right? So we've already had 125 thousand dollars. The guys are gonna be very quickly getting the, uh, getting the updates done for you. But I can tell you right now what the 125 thousand uh, dollar stretch goal is gonna be. I'm gonna just, we've hit it already, right? I can, yeah, we have. I, I yeah. can see for that. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can, I, I'm okay to spoil this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm okay. not gonna tell you what. Uh, no, I'm not spoiling Erwin. You just, you've already seen it. It's just <laughs> so the first stretch goal is. Wait, no, uh, go on. Let them know. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> the first stretch goal. So, I'm, I'm, are you looking? No. Well, you, you know what's happening. No, I don't know. So let me let me look at our look at this. Oh no, I forgot to press my button over there. Hold on, guys. I'm gonna have to go and press my button. Did you? My buttons. My buttons aren't working. Hold on. You guys are gonna get. Usually at this point, my guest puts music on for me, but we'll have We'll train. We'll train Ed up to. Train to start making some music. Yeah. All right, press number two on the on the button on the pad for me there. Two. Awesome. There we go. There we go. Now now we've got our oh, buttons wizard. working because we're ever we're ever so professional. Developer <laughs> and tech aficionado. Look at our gorgeous board. This is a an alternate. This is a map the guys have been kind of play testing with. It's not necessarily going to be in the final game, but we're play testing with different layouts. We're trying different missions and objectives, and we also have this gorgeous camera for getting in super close and tight to our minis so here we have i'll get them out of the way of the chat there we go here we have red hawk and we also have claudine now i was speaking about the 125,000 stretch goal so i'm going to tell you guys right now that ooh, oh, no. this is our standard this is our standard oh. tracking bomber filled with vril energy this is our little creepy crawly mechanical um fa no actually do you know what You've changed these recently, haven't you? you I play tested yeah. just today and found out the hard way that Tracking Bombers have had a rules update and they now do something a bit more brutal than they did in the Beast of War gameplay, oh, yeah. right? When I see these spawn, uh, there's an instant, just just this air across the board, everyone just goes, oh no, no, it's, it's here. Because it used to move quite slowly, but we've now give, developed a rule called Scuttle. And what it does, as soon as it locks its eyes on, a, on an allied hero, it will scuttle towards him really quickly at twice the speed, straight into the combat, bypassing its, uh, its friendly, well, Nazi enemies, and will just... They now, they now move twice as fast and, and decimate everywhere. And uh, our first stretch goal is going to be alternate minis for these. We are adding... Um, straight, straight to Kickstarter, we are adding four more tracking bombers to the core game in different sculpts to give you guys so more of that. wasn't enough. Yeah. Now we, you need four more. We needed to show these guys off in more detail and make them kind of more dynamic. So four more tracking bombers are going to get added to the core pledge. Um, <sighs> Kickstarter exclusive, Thanks, alternate. My heart's really, really funky. <laughs> um, yeah, they are fantastic terrifying but they're awesome yeah if you guys can obviously see you know we've got this board set up as, as another example we're going to have lots of different layouts and something we're going to talk about a lot during the campaign is all the different maps you're going to be able to have all the different raid missions that you're going to be able to go on and how the raid mission format is going to offer you all this replayability and all this versatility so we'll be chatting about this talking a lot more about the, the units and stuff you'll be coming across as well DIY maps to Jafu. I'll tell you right now, you can build any map you want, essentially. Yeah. If you really, if you really were that way inclined, you can take the tiles and absolutely go go mad. How the raid mode works is really straightforward. You're gonna have three decks, a deck of cards for maps, a deck of cards for mission objectives, and a deck of cards for your enemy faction, your Nazi faction or your real Meister faction. Mm. So your map will give you a layout, which will include all of your doors, your tokens, your spawn points, your barracks as your exit. So it'll give you everything you need to set up a map of your choosing, or random if you want to randomize it. Yep. You also then have mission objectives. So this is going to define whether you're getting a dossier, whether you're trying to go and destroy something, whether you're trying to capture somebody, whether you're trying to go and rescue somebody, mm -hmm. your mission objectives will define that. And then finally, your Vrilmeister faction or your Nazi faction card will give you a specific set of enemies that you're gonna come up against. So General Wolf, <laughs> for example, yep. loves his mechs, right? Oh uh, yeah, he is a big mech man. He's probably rides around in a little mech chair. So uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He, he tracking bombers alongside him. Did anyone else have a giggle in the trailer whenever <laughs> Quentin throws the grenade and General Wolf just kind of turns around and just and scuttles again. away? When I first saw that, I, it absolutely tickled me. Whereas Gisela, 
Uh, Gruber, for example, she's more into mutations. Yes, she's got these uh, the six little six oh one creatures bounced around. Did sure. you say little six oh one creatures? Uh, not that little. <laughs> I mean, where is he? There he there is. He is. Yeah, Look at him. Somewhat intimidating. They pack a punch. Yeah, these guys are, are not little by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I will say, if it's not clear, guys, everything you're seeing, these are 3D prints. This is very much still still prototyping we're still developing and welcome welcome gothier d as eight backer 876 welcome to the good place it's very nice to have you here and thank you everyone everyone's welcoming everybody in the chat it's such a oh, oh, up to 937 <laughs> people man oh man so nice yeah the pose what about the pose of these guys they are just malicious looking and it's these prehensile tails yeah what's the detail look like guys can you see the mini nicely you tell me Make sure we're showing this to you nice and good. And Antoine, thank you so much. Welcome to a good place. You're so happy to have you here. <laughs> Do we have another 601 on the table? Uh, no. I don't think I brought any more with That's me. That's okay. We just put a few little sample ones to show. Thank you for confirming the cam is good. That makes me happy. <laughs> so we've already hit the first stretch goal. You guys are obviously going to have to just wait for those images to go in, but those will be alternate four alternate tracking bomber minis. And where are we now? We're going to be busting through a lot. So add your questions up here. I'll be going up here shortly to start going through some of those. I want to chat a little bit about you for a second because Hello. this is the first time you guys are getting to, to meet Ed. Um, <laughs> Been hiding. I will say, like as, as a huge thank you to everybody who supported us with Joan of Arc, who supported us uh, with Solomon Cain. Um, our team here in the UK is now up to 11 people. If you follow us on Facebook, the Mythic Games Facebook, we recently shared a picture where we went out for lunch to welcome a bunch of our new members and, and, and sort of, um, it's, it's just like an absolute delight. And we thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts for allowing you to let us do what we love every single day. Mm. Um, and we now have, keep me right on this, this Four game developers that are working on that are working on right busters, but then we've also got Correct. Stu and Josh who have joined as well now. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, no, there's yeah, there's uh, Steve and I yep. as developers. Yep. Jake is lead designer, and Stu and Josh are both uh, playtesting yep. and helping uh, develop yep. uh, right busters as well. And then we've got Babish Dale and Nick and the other all office. working on Solomon Kane as, as well. well um, and then we we lock eyes in his room with Ben and Chris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, to do uh, whatever they get up to while we just crack on with getting mm -hmm. these games as awesome as we can get them, really. Um, and how, greetings from Poland. It's very nice to have you guys here. My warmest, warmest greetings to Poland as well. So, Ed, with the chat, Cherry in the chat is asking, what is your job? What do you do? Uh, so, I'm one of the new game developers. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as, as I was saying, you know, the backing of Solomon Kane and Joan of Arc gave these guys the opportunity to bring me on board. So, I'm incredibly grateful to mm -hmm. everyone who has backed. And also for Rick Busters as well. <laughs> and the, it's an absolute yeah. privilege to be working on these games. I mean, I'm loving it. Um, so <laughs> I am working on Rick Busters. Um, when that started going off full on, full time, I was one of the first ones on board to get cracking with that. And yeah, I'm helping to develop the game. So I'm primarily focused on hero development, mm -hmm. getting every single hero as awesome and as epic and as badass as we can get them. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's, that's me day to day. I make sure everyone's balanced, no one's too you know, better than the other one, but everyone's got their own unique twist that really makes you want to pick them over someone else. I mean, I can't pick. We've got a dozen of them laid out on, in the development <laughs> office. And, uh, this I mean, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, that here with that here <laughs> with that thing and that, that thing uh, it yeah. does. I was like, gonna say anything about them. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings to Israel, hello Shai, it's lovely to have you here. Steve was suggesting that you make tea and coffee. No, 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 no. I think it's your turn, Steve, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Steve, go on. I'm, I'm wired in. I can't go anywhere, my friend. Mm -hmm, it's all down mm -hmm. to you. I'll take sugar in mine, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, like, we are going to have many Kickstarter lives over the course of the, the campaign. I know it's only 10 days, which a lot of people go, why is it only 10 days? It's plenty of time to unlock lots of stretch goals. We've got a ton of content to add into the game. We'll have lives with Ed to chat about the heroes, the decks, how they're going to work. We're going to talk about some of the stretch goal <laughs> heroes that you guys are hopefully going to unlock with us and um, we'll talk about what makes them different because every single hero is going to have an asymmetrical hero deck and play completely differently right uh yep i'm working on doing a background history on on uh well i'm not sure how much i can say but uh, i do research on all of them 
Uh, I try to look at what kind of um, the, the character design by Stefan, what, yeah, what kind of vision he's had for them, what kind of vision Jake's had for mm -hmm. them. I kind of try and blend the artwork to try and start to meet the actual, you know, bring the personality of the artwork yep. into the way they play. So uh, are they ranged, are they melee, are they stealthy, loud? I try and bring it all out in a really complimentary deck. Uh, and there's only 12 in there, so each card is, you know, has to be its own little, you know, nuclear bomb of awesome. <laughs> they just drop into that room like, bam! Nuclear bomb just of dirt Nazis awesome. <laughs> I love it so uh, much. Because each card needs to be epic. Everyone, you know, and I, I just don't, I don't need to have, pick it up and go, oh, that's boring. I pick it up and go, ooh, <laughs> hello. What trouble can I cause? And you play it and... <laughs> Heads roll. Um, uh, the enemies. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. If we can ever let Ed play with you guys at conventions, you'll see just what kind of trouble Ed likes to cause when he's playing a Reich Buster. I have a <laughs> reputation. We, <laughs> we call it a, a stressed test. Tested. Stress tested. Ed. I the emphasis <laughs> on the end of the bot end. Uh, I want you to look right into that camera, just right at that camera, right? And don't just, just do poker face. Just relax. Just relax. But look at that camera. Lena in the chat who's a, an avid follower of us, an avid follower of Beast of War, has just said something. I want you just to look at that, that camera. And she said, actually, a German deserter as a hero would be really awesome. That's all you're getting. That's all you're getting. It's not, <laughs> not a bad idea. The king of average is here. Michael is backing backer 942. Welcome. If you guys haven't seen it, you need to go to his channel on YouTube. I'm not sure if it's live just yet. He will hopefully tell us, but he's going to have a little uh, chat a -roo all about Right Brusters and what was on the page and what you're going to see. So, oh, Lena, Lena's saying it wasn't her idea to have a German deserter, but there's a few people in the chat are big fans of this idea. If you want to claim yeah. the idea, claim it. Oh, we've not said anything. The king of average. So, uh -huh. there's Jacob Thompson. So what are we at? Stretch goal wise, we're at 150,000. We have Ooh. indeed unlocked Ooh. the next stretch goal. Now, I can't unfortunately show you what it looks like, but I can tell you exactly what we're replacing for the 150,000 stretch goal. So, in the core game, before you guys hop and support, we had these. So these, get out of the way, 601. Get out of the way, Claudine. So these were our Reichbusters turn order tokens which obviously let you choose and customize your turn order. And whenever you get into the post alarm phase, they're all the same on the other side. So you can randomize the turn order. So once you're post alarm and everything's gone a bit crazy, this is how you would randomize it and do that. Um, Toby says, as can you take a breather? I need to go put my son to bed. No, not a chance, Toby. We're, we're going hard, buddy. So what you've just <laughs> unlocked at the $150,000 stretch goal are absolutely wicked. Where do you see the images from? They're so cool dog tags mm -hmm. to replace these cardboard tokens. So We're going to have really cool right busters in gray of dog tags and um, that will give you something really nice to have thrown around mm. and, and kind of just give it more feel. Yeah, a bit more tactile, make you feel a bit more like a part of that world. Fondle factor is the term Fondle I like. Fondle factor. Fondle factor. So you're passing your dog tags from one each other. So that's, that's <laughs> just a little something extra to, uh, to make it really cool. You'll see in the, the stretch goal updates um, what they look like very shortly if it's not there already. And Sebastian, welcome backer 969. Hello, we're Sebastian. Nearly, we're nearly a thousand backers. You're in a very good place. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dog tags will be in everything. Dog tags will be uh, in, and just yes, they'll they'll be a Kickstarter exclusive. So it'll be something um, that will just be for the Kickstarter, um, but it will be in both the core pledge and the all in, whichever whichever you want to go with. Mm. We're nearly at a thousand viewers. That's amazing. Wow. Very welcome. Either. So uh, yeah, we had a lot of support. I realized I skipped quickly. We had a lot of support for the Good Place Club. Um, well, you said it now. It's gonna. It's a, it's a thing. Yeah, I think. Oh, it's so close. Here we go again. Here we go da, again. Da, 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 da. Oh no, it keeps dropping. Peter, back at nine hundred seventy-five. Thank you so go. much. Thousand viewers, welcome everybody. <laughs> Thank you for it's coming. Twice what I was expecting. If you're a, twice what you're expecting. Oh, yeah. yeah. You said five hundred. I was like, oh, we can do better than that, but a thousand. <laughs> Um, that is awesome. Yes, th thank you so much for joining us for this, guys. Mm. It's, it's been an absolute treat. Obviously, this is what it's all about for us, and it's going to be 10 epic days of lives, of chats, of stretch goal unlocks, of updates. Um, you know what we're like. We're not going to lower our standards. We're going to keep in touch with you guys all the way throughout <laughs> the campaign. Shall we uh, have a look at some questions and answers? And answer yeah, some, bring it some on. thoughts of people. Oh, look, from Israel, Shai saying you're in a good place. It's giving us a thumbs up. 
love it, love it. <laughs> was busy wrapping up my video, so missed the launch. Did so, King of Average. Did is your video live? Is it uploading? Tell us when it's going to go, man, because people need to go and check out the King of Average. He just does wonder. It's live. It's live right now. Don't go right now. <laughs> wait, wait until we're done Stay here. With us. But then definitely go and well, check out his YouTube maybe channel. After Leo. If you're oh, look at him linking it straight into chat. Look at I'm going, nah, it's okay. <laughs> Save and watch later. Boom. So, a couple of key things I'll, I'll mention again. Leo will be live after us here, probably in about half an hour or so. So, we'll have some French. Uh, anyone who wants to get questions in French, hang around for that so he'll have the opportunity to answer. Um, we want to support all of our audiences worldwide best we can. Um, I'm going to go through the questions and answers in a second. So, get them in there right now, guys, if you want to get them answered. Um, what was the other thing? Yes, the other thing. So the gun hole pledge, we're not, everything you see on the campaign will be available during the pledge manager. I'll say that right now, but we obviously want your support during the Kickstarter so we can unlock as many stretch goals as possible. We want to get as much content rammed into the game as we possibly can. So for the Kickstarter, you get an extra $20 off the all in gun hole pledge at $200. That'll just be available during the 10 days for the Kickstarter campaign. After that, it'll no longer be $200. So, Everything on the Kickstarter page, though, will be available in the Pledge Manager, so if you are worried about paychecks, or you are worried about um, what happens after the 10 days, you can still jump in in the Pledge Manager and still get everything you see on the page. That includes O'Reilly, includes the dog tags and all the stretch goals, so do not worry about that. Love the excitement around Kickstarter launches, man. Kickstarter launches are the best, right? It's, uh, it's a mixture of nerves and excitement, and are people going to like it, and are they going to join us? And, uh. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the office was, uh, yeah, it was a good atmosphere in the office. Everyone's very, it was, everyone's buzzing, you know, with excitement yep. for the launch. Uh, and the it might have been, five minutes yeah. leading up to it with, uh, I can't remember who it was on the Discord chat, was counting down. I yeah. was like, no, stop. Guys on the Discord, <laughs> fire a link below. We have a Mythic Games Discord channel where we, we chat on a regular basis. I hop in now and again to answer questions uh, whenever I can. Um, and... T Crin, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah uh, the guys were counting down the, to the launch of the Kickstarter on the Discord yeah. tonight, and it was making me super nervous but super excited. But yeah, the, the energy behind it was fantastic. So it really got us going as well, especially with a few minutes to the live launch. Yeah. Tim Carter, right? We're going to do some questions. Tim Carter opened with the question O'Reilly is a Vril infused hero? Question mark? Um, am I allowed? You can to? say, yeah, you I, can, I can say. say yeah. Uh, go on then. Uh, Yes. Um, so O'Reilly, are you sure? Once it comes out, I can't go back. Yep. Uh, so yes, he's been captured by the Nazis. Uh, he's been experimented on by the Rillmeisters uh, for many years. And well, without going into too much detail, yes, he is a real infused hero, mm -hmm. which you will acquire at some point, somehow. And he will have all these kind of unique uh, abilities behind him because he's got this real power. So rather than your normal hero who's running around with guns and rifles and stuff, he's got, well, realness. So Mutations, empowered uh, yeah, exactly. aspects. Yeah, I don't see yeah. too much because it'll give away some of the excitement yeah. when you actually get him. But uh, I will say he's going to be really good. <laughs> I'll see myself out. <laughs> I loved it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going to pretend. I absolutely loved yeah, it. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's one of the very excited to be working on. Um, currently developing at the moment. And yeah, he's very different to all of the core heroes because well he's got a real arm I mean mm -hmm. if that doesn't uh, you know, make him <laughs> apart he's going to uh, he's going to come with his own mission that's going to essentially integrate into the campaign if you want to do that so yep. uh, Mike Foy said that was really bad by the way <laughs> the jokes folks uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we love a good pun yes, we're seriously we, we love a good pun often. right let's get the <laughs> Q&A's out so unfortunately guys this is a small issue we have with our, our setup in the UK studio here is I'm not able to bring the questions up on screen but I will read them out and I'll work my way through them um, as I do so the first question is from ah uh, no let's see what order are these in let's try and get them roughly um, I'll go I'll just go from bottom to top so this might not be in the exact order you guys asked so uh, Def Drago asks, were there any further discussion about noise checks during item pickup? Seems insane to make a ton of noise by picking up a bandage. We have been reworking the noise checks. So um, we do want noise to be a core part of the game. Um, mm. it, it's Because every decision you make in terms of how much rummaging around or doors opening or time you're going to take, um, needs to have a, an impact on not just the time you're wasting in terms of the rounds but also in how likely you are to have a patrol interrupt you or the Nazis become aware of your presence. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to keep the noise but what we've done is split the noise decks, right? 
That's correct, yeah. Um, so now, pre-alarm, you're gonna, this is not in the rule book, this is something we've been play testing and we will update on later um, during the campaign. Pre-alarm, the noise checks will be slightly different to the, the noise checks you do post-alarm, which means things like picking up bandages are less likely to have devastating effects. Um, and things like shooting guns post-alarm because the alarms and klaxons and stuff are going off, post-alarm, smaller noise things like bandages, picking up items, you essentially can just ignore because there's no way anyone's gonna hear that Oh, and the clacks is going yeah. off, yeah. wah, 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 wah. No one's going to hear you rummaging through a drawer. Yeah. Um, and the item uh, is something I'm also working on. So I'm the weapons master, the item inventory dude. Weapons master. Weapons master, yeah, and the nuclear cards. Um, but yeah, so I'm working on the items. And what I've tried to do is try to be a little fair, because I'm not the meanest person in the world. So bandages, for example, will be one of the easier things to pick up. They're kind of there on top of the surfaces of the work tables and stuff. So there's a very small noise rating for yep. picking those up. The more noisy things will be more epic in terms mm -hmm. of what they do. Absolutely. So there won't be a ton of noise, but yep. it can happen, you know? The, the dice gods might be against you that day. <laughs> the real noises might be after you. Mm -hmm. But once your alarm goes off, you, you don't have to worry about that. You know? Um, Turin says, will there be Leo and as minis? I vote for a mad scientist. I saw him talking about this on Discord, a mad scientist Leo <laughs> and an Igor style as. How does he get to be the mad scientist and I get to be the Igor? Like what? I'm not sure I'm a fan of no that. Comment. Not sure I'm a fan of that. I'm gonna just glaze right over it. Um, in terms of the shipping guys, it's something that we'll answer in the Kickstarter comments. It's not something, Ben is a guy who'll be on mm. the comments later tonight. You can answer questions about shipping um, as ever, what we tend to do with our shipping estimates is we go on the higher end because we would rather guesstimate the, the kind of top end weight with all stretch goals, everything unlocked, which you know could include up more than one box, for example, you know, even in the core set. Um, and we like to guesstimate best possible outcome for stretch goals and highest possible outcome for shipping. So that way you're not shocked and we don't come with alarming shipping later. So mm. yeah, honestly, with shipping, we want it to be as cheap for you guys as we can possibly make it. We, do, we don't make any money on the shipping. It's not something that we, we, we want to make it literally as cheap for ourselves and as cheap for you as we possibly can. So we'll do whatever we can, um, even as far as working with, with regionalized distributors and stuff where we have to, to try and avoid terrible things. Um, like import charges and things like that. We'll do whatever we can to support it. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. In fact, if we had a real Meister that speciality was shipping, so I could just fight missions against him all day, I would do it. Yeah. Because no one likes it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Jack says, please change suppressing fire so it does not affect zombies. It might be interesting to add specific abil abilities to enemy cards for zombies. They always activate regardless. You can talk about a new thing that's been added, can't you? No, no, no. It's not no, you quite. can. You can talk about the shield. Uh, well, yes, it's uh, the shield. You mean the, the the meat shield? Yes, I do. Okay, so yes, that is something we are trying to we are currently developing. Um, so we do want all of the Nazi uh, Nazi enemies to have their own kind of feel, their own little unique ability to them. Uh, for example, the zombies they form a little meaty horde. Um, <laughs> that kind of you know meanders and wombles and zombles down the corridors, and zombles down zombles. the corridors. <laughs> Uh, and what we call in this rule is currently called meat shield. So you, say for example, you've got this room here full of oh, yeah. Nazis and dogs and, and soldiers and officers and there's some zombies at the front and Quentin over here trying to fire his bow into the officer. But the zombies will form a meat shield. So they will block off any damage that gets put into the room. You've got to kill them first before you can get through to the softer, squishy officers. Um, so that is one of the things we are working on. But as you say, zombies through the suppressing fire, I'm in charge of the suppressing fire um, card. Uh, that's a very good suggestion, actually. Um, don't be surprised if you see it, actually. Yeah. But we're gonna, we're still working on it, so changes are still being worked on. Yeah. So these, these are very much our, our play testy prototype. We did these again for Essen and for our videos to kind of show just old, very, now. very simple. These are already a month old. These are already um, a little bit out of date. So we have upgraded these quite a bit um, since then, as, as Ed was alluding to, including adding things like special rules because, um, yeah, it, it was all too easy to pick out exactly who you wanted. Some of yes. these bigger uh, and more kind of meat shield units, exactly as the term says, need to get in the way. Exactly, and it, it kind of brings you back to what I said about the tracking bombers. If you've got a tracking bomber in that room with some zombies, you can't shoot that tracking yeah. bomber, the zombie's blocking it. 
But that makes that tracking bomber even more terrifying because mm -hmm. you can't get to it until it gets out. And when it's out, it's going to blow. Mm -hmm. So yes, we are working on their own little uh, unique abilities yep. to make them a little bit more threatening. And yes, Ian and Martin, both welcome. Thank you so much for backing. You're in a very good place. The chat's already doing my <laughs> job for me. Thank welcome you, everybody. Um, so yes, there's lots more customization to come. We will continually share these updates as we go through them. Um, one of my personal favorites rec recently was that if you shoot a tracking bomber, it will explode. Yep. But now they run twice as fast yep. whenever they can lock onto a hero, they essentially. They see a hero. They start their turn inside of a hero, yep. poof, scuttle away. But the advantage of the heroes is if they take out melee, they can stop it exploding. Yes. So it's that feeling of the threat increasing, but the tactical choices for dealing with the threats also becoming more interesting. You'll often see heroes now throwing themselves into the middle of a, a meat shield party and just stabbing at these tracking bombers, <laughs> trying to stop them from taking out everyone. <laughs> but then if it does blow up, it does take out a few of the Nazis as well. Yep. So do I take the wound? Do I clear the room? <laughs> Lots of decisions to make. <laughs> a welcome, James. A welcome, Bob Wesk. Bob Bob Wesk. Bob 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 Bosk. Bob Bob Bosk. Bob Bosk. Hello. Do we ship to Ohio? Yes, we ship to Ohio. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm well, going to go ahead and say. So, how many maps slash map tiles are included in the base game, and how many campaign levels are included in the base game? Well, map tiles is really simply at the moment. Again, pre-stretch goals, we have 28 tiles um, that you're going to find in, in the core box. That's just the core box. Before you look at the Not of the Earth expansion um, or any of the extra elements you'll find in the Project X expansion, um, and there'll be multiple different maps you would make, both through the raid missions, where you'll have a deck of different map layouts that you can choose or random select from and then we'll have the campaign missions which will have their own e specifically designed missions to lead the right busters through the project real story because you have to remember these right busters they're kind of going in a little blind they just have a little bit of intel mm -hmm. and we've only shown you guys from the gameplay a small small example of the amount of real in the game you know we've had some zombies some tracking bombers some experiments we haven't even started to get into the uh, storm the sold the sold that's their hammers mm. the the real and part weaponry there's a lot of real and a lot of world for the right busters and for you guys to discover over the next 10 days there's going to be a lot to add oh yeah um so how many campaign levels are in the base game so six missions uh, initially will be formed into a single campaign and that's something we will design that's something we're going to give some narrative to and some story to for the project real setting for the right busters to really learn all about the world and you for to en engage with that in a way that makes sense for the narrative and for the story in the raid mode you can customize unlimited is it not unlimited well, the, some <laughs> mathematician out there will sort this out for me but you've got uh map tile oh sorry map cards you've then got objective cards and then you've got real master faction cards and then even once you've selected whatever options of those you want or randomized it, you'll also then have team cards to set up your specific kind of team setup for your heroes that'll help dictate the weapons and skills and items they have available to them whenever you're doing your sort of R&D phase and you're getting ready to go out on the mission and you set yourselves up. Mm. So if you want to be a Navy SEAL focused team or you want to be a commando focused team, whatever way you want to set up your two, three, four person, uh, four right buster team, the team cards will help you define that and make it feel really good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Gouldier said, hello, look forward to seeing more visuals about add-ons, but if not, no early bird. No, there is no early bird. Um, O'Reilly, as you see him, is a Kickstarter exclusive. He is right there. He's not going to be an early bird. He's not going anywhere. You're just going to get him. Aren't we nice? Yes. <laughs> Ish. O'Reilly nice. O'Reilly nice. O'Reilly. O'Reilly nice. Uh, yes. Yeah, get him. Um, is there a painted pledge? Hold on a minute. Who is the Irish man? I'm going to find it. Um, if you look in the FAQ, I think we have an FAQ question all about um, painted minis. Um, I'm trying to remember. Did there was an FAQ question because we knew this question was going to come up, uh, and I'm just going to check to see. Yes, can Seb Levine paint all my Right Busters Project Real miniatures? Yes, for the price of only 195. Tart fillets, that's Seb's favorite food if you didn't know. And also, if you design Seb's own cloning machine, a Seb machine, get it, Seb Levine, Seb machine, get uh, it? Yep, yep. <laughs> then we've got a deal. Other than that, I'm afraid, uh, no, there is not going to be a painted pledge. The, the minis will come in two different colors, however. You'll have a, a tan color for the heroes and a gray, evil grill color uh, for, for yeah. the Nazis. 
Uh, <laughs> Baron Fig, welcome. Oh my God, all the people joining. Backer 1091, thank you so, so much, everybody. Um, so let me see. Adam says, are you going to have an Australian as an allied hero for a stretch goal? Please, dot, dot, dot. You're going to have to just keep up to date with the stretch goals. Mm -hmm. Can't give too much away. This is my first stream. I can't start spoiling immediately. I got shouted at I, so I, much. I tried. I, I was shut down quickly. <laughs> Let's ask the big question, says Lars. Will we have an American professor of archaeology with a bullwhip as a hero? <laughs> Possibly with the face of Azar Leo. <laughs> we, something we'll say pretty clearly, we wanted to let our artists, our sculptors, um, and our game designers go a little bit mad with this. Of course, we're embracing lots of tropes, and we're, we're, there's a lot of kind of typical stuff. Sarge, for example, is really your all-American hero. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, Claudine is our French resistance fighter, and they do embody these kind of traits that we'd expect of the period. But we're not really in the line of just parading movies or, or comics directly. We'd rather give you something that's recognisable, but then add our own flair, our own yeah. story, our own background on top. There's not going to be an Indiana Jones mini, all right? It's it's, it's there's not going to be an. Indiana, I, was, I was just thinking, I was like, no. there is like a no. I very I very much doubt it. Um, hello, Ronnie. Very much welcome to the good place, sir. Thank you hello. for backing. Um, so let me keep going through the questions here. Possibilities of other languages, even as an add-on or anything. So this is going to be a huge topic. I think lots of people uh, will ask this question. We um, essentially, we very much thought the Rightbusters could be an option when we did that. We, we when we launched it and we started putting all the, the kind of cogs in place to get this, this project together, we really wanted to look at different options for languages. Uh, when we went to Essence Field, for example, we had met with a bunch of different companies and translators and to get some experience and some guidance on how we might best approach it. Unfortunately, at the moment, we, we couldn't find a way that both guarantees um, a really kind of high, high quality finished translated product for you guys and something that was definitely going to make sort of um, sound business sense and not be any potential risk or detriment to the Kickstarter campaign. So we are sticking with English and French at the moment. But that's not to say we have some long-term plans. We do hope to bring Right Brussels to retail. Um, if the, the campaign is successful, which hopefully with all the support of you guys it will be, and we can launch a, a retail version of, of Right Busters, then we've got a bunch more options for regionalization and localized uh, copies of, of languages and things like that. Mm. I can just tell you right now, though, unfortunately, during this Kickstarter, it's highly unlikely that we'll have anything but English and French. We will, of course, listen to feedback from the community, but we just couldn't really find a way to make it happen um, for, for Right Busters. So uh, we are sorry about that. And again, there's some FAQ uh, information on the page as well about that too. Um, so Sven says, why only six missions? And this is a really, a really simple answer. The campaign is our little way of adding our creative juices and flows to the heroes and to the, to the Vril and, 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 and tell that world across, across six missions, plus the missions that you're going to get with the likes of O'Reilly and that you'll find in the Knot of This Earth. If, you, if you're more into the alien and the really source of Vril energy storyline. Mm. Um, and the reason there's only six in, in the core box, uh, plus the O'Reilly, of course, for the seventh, is because raid mode is going to be there. So the raid missions are going to be the main way to play the game so you just you sit down and either choose or just randomize your own objective map and faction to play against so you're going to get different experiences every time before you even start talking about the different teams and the different heroes all the asymmetrical decks plus all the different things that can take place during the game the amount of gameplay in the raid missions alone is just huge so we wanted to keep ourselves kind of um, condensed on the campaign missions because we we felt like that was a good length to tell the story we wanted to tell and give a nice ongoing experience i know i have sat down to many a charter stone <laughs> to many a, a pandemic le my pandemic le legacy season one is still on month two my 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 charter stone is on game four um, so we wanted to be realistic about it and, and mm. six to us although it might not sound like a large number the readmissions themselves are going to offer just so much replayability that we are very 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 happy with this and welcome larsen thank you for joining us um holette said i was fond of the theme i was reluctant to play it this time but i saw the trailer with this amazing <laughs> music Yes, it is amazing music. Yeah. Two Steps From Hell, it's Rada, it's called. And I watched the playthroughs. I surrender. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. I'm in this time again. Thank you. 
thank you. <laughs> Look, we, we hope that anyone that backs over the course of the campaign will show you more of the game, we'll get into the world together, we'll mm. show you more of the stretch goals that we unlock, and we hope to show you something that you're going to really enjoy to play on the, on the tabletop. We do these trailers because we love them. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we genuinely, genuinely do. Um, and we think tabletop requires gorgeous minis, it requires great gameplay, and it requires proper support and world building and things like the trailer to really get the feeling uh, across to everybody um, and plenty of epic moments which i know i'm trying to make sure is plenty in yeah there. this this game had more high fives than any game i i used to do a lot of demoing at conventions years ago I used to run a lot of different games and at essen i saw so many tables with heroes and players high-fiving each other frenetically it just made me so happy um, Leonidas will be here in about 15 or 20 minutes. I check to make sure he's getting... Yeah, he'll be here a little bit after we finish up. When will the pledge manager end? It's a tough one, but basically I think what's likely to happen... We're going to finish right at the end of November. Um, obviously we have um, Christmas sort of in between and the new year in between that. So it's likely that we'll open the pledge manager at the start of the new year to keep things simple. And um, we'll kind of get in contact with everybody then. And more often than not, we keep our pledge manager open for sort of one and a half to two months. So, But we will continually send out Kickstarter updates to let you know where the game is and also notify you of the pledge manager and it well ahead of it closing. You don't need to worry about that. But you can imagine that the pledge manager will be ending kind of at least two months into 2019. So plenty of chance if you don't if you don't get in now to get in to get in later. Mm. Um, mm -mm. Do, do, do so. Let me see. Uh, Enzo, any chance for real or other decals for the doors? Maybe some can simply be the word secret or danger to keep out, etc. Et um, that's a great bit of feedback, actually. We we are still uh, tweaking and playing with the the doors a little, actually. Mm. Um, the, the cool thing, I don't know if you guys noticed in the door art, but we wanted this really easy way if you just, when you're looking at the table, just to quickly see what level, what danger level and noise level a door is so you can see by the lights on it immediately. That was something that the guys were kind of playing around with and we've actually been putting the doors on the table and kind of play, play testing with doors. It sounds like a weird thing to say, but yeah. seeing how they feel whenever we're actually playing with them on the board. So any suggestions you have, definitely something we could absolutely, definitely absolutely tweak. Uh, Shaka says, we have a Leo Mini in other games. Is it possible to have a full Mythic Games team Mini in this game? I find you look like Red Hawk as when you sniped Leo for no spoil. <laughs> uh, um, so we have a, a ton of heroes, a ton of... Well, I, don't, I don't have a closer camera, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I see it. She, <laughs> she's rocking that hat far better than I ever would. I can't wear hats. Any, any one of my friends will tell you that Az cannot wear hats. Um, <laughs> just saying there better be Claymores. Davy, do me a favor, talking about Claymores. Go on Google for me when Claymores were invented. I'm curious to find out. When were Clay, do you know when Claymores were invented? I was looking into that uh, for my own research and doing the items. I don't I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what chat really says. Chat, when, when were. so chat, chat. Greetings Az, hello Joe, thank you for joining us. The swords, Claymores! <laughs> Steve caught me a cracker and said Claymores. I can tell you that we're going to have explosives. We're going to have, does anyone, where's Claudine? Get over uh, here. She is there. We can give another little another little bit of insight about something you've been play testing with. Uh, yes, it's a new thing I'm currently working on, seeing how it works. You saw it for the first I time I saw it today. for the first time today, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's one I'm trying to get to work quite nicely. Um, yeah, I wonder if you can spot what. Uh, what is she standing on? Yeah, what do you, I put your foot on it. Is that a <laughs> is that a saying? It is now. <laughs> so Claudine is has babe. Yes, an explosive explosive package of TNT with her, and she currently is having some of her cards tweaked, so she could potentially drop an explosive package somewhere, reel off some cable, and then yes, plunger so detonates as a free action on one of her turns. Um, yeah, so when we originally were developing the very early days yeah. of Ride Busters, we were playing with a demo, demolition mission, mm -hmm. and Claudine was central to that early development. Mm -hmm. And she used to get her into the objective room, she would place the demo <laughs> charge, and she would scramble off as fast as she can with this explosion behind her as she jumps <laughs> through the castle. Um, and we're kind of bringing it back to that. So I brought this demo charge back out. It's a booby trap, and she just places it down, she runs away, and then when, she, you know, when she's clear with the blaster, she pushes that plunger yeah. down, and all the Nazis in that area get vaporized, including the objective. Yep. Hooray, you're, well, yep. in theory you've won, you've got to get out first. So <laughs> we hear you on the traps and preparation. I'm and working and on it. Yeah, we, we've, got, we've got some fun ideas for Maybe it. traps are definitely in there. Whether they're claymores or not, do some more history research, but 
this man, Zolt, Zolt. is absolutely on. Didn't mad Jack Churchill use a claymore in World War II? He did. Mm -hmm. And he also used a bow, which is part of the, where is he? There he is, there he which is. was part of the inspiration, just part of the inspiration oh, for know. why we really decided that Mr. Quentin would come Away, with the longbow that he is equipped with because Mad Jack Churchill just what a per what a guy like oh, what yeah. like like some of the if you read even if you just go to his Wikipedia page Fantastic some page of the, the skirmishes and battles he was in where he was just playing his I say just he was playing his bagpipes and rallying all the men and how he made it out unscratched just oh, I think it was, it was crazy he, uh, I believe I read he captured 60 something Germans on the on the beaches of Normandy just like he took a load of them prisoner with with his, with his sword. I believe. Don't quote me on that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic to read up about. He's definitely one to to before bed have a little read about. Yeah, he's a, he's an interesting or was an interesting guy. Um, Funky Boy said, "Is there going to be Hitler in a mech mount?" <laughs> um, you've probably seen the fact that we're developing our own world here. This is weird, weird World War Two. This is weird mm. War Two. We are we are wanting to really carve out our own um, section of this world. So at the moment, I can safely say that there's no plans for Hitler and Omek. I did have someone come up to me at Essen mm. and say, "Ask me, say, can I ask you a question?" I said, "Yes, of course." And they said, "So uh, is Hitler in the game, and why not?" <laughs> and I was like, "The great well, thing about miniatures is you can paint them how you like." Yep. You can paint them, and if you happen to paint something that looks like something like that, you, perfect. Yep, you do it, you do it your way. You. <laughs> uh, so, um, Chirin says, will the better rule be updated as the game develops? It absolutely will. We'll have regular updates about the things that we're testing and talking about. Um, Discipulus de Armitage says, what is the minimum number of heroes needed for a game? So we are going to be balancing right busters for two, three, and four heroes. So if you're a solo player, we do recommend that you play with two heroes to get the optimally balanced experience. If you play with one hero, you absolutely can, but you're going to find things a little bit tough. You're going to have to be very choosy about what hero you go with, because a lot of our heroes offer a lot of different styles of gameplay. And um, one hero will give you a very tough experience. So two, three, or four, you will be absolutely 100%. Um, and that's that the hero counts we'll be balancing and play testing for. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, <laughs> I won't say too much, because uh, say we're still balancing it. So, uh, so Eric said, GZ on the fast funny. GZ to you too, thanks. Uh, we did for this game, regarding stretch goals, please look at the Street Masters expansion campaign running at the moment. Small gaps between the goals of five and 10,000 showing several at once. Right? So he's giving us a lot, of, a lot of ideas. We have a lot of stretch goals planned. Um, we, we will continually hope to, to smash through them on a, on a regular basis and we you have no problem teasing a little bit ahead of things to come and um, obviously it's just the first evening it's the first day mm. depending what part of the world you're in so <laughs> at the moment we're really trying to keep up with how quickly you guys are going through stretch goals what are we on now 171,000 wow That's so close to another one isn't it thank you yes we are whoa whoa just jumped massively okay I um, think we can reveal another one please. oh man we absolutely I, can I, I, I get excited <laughs> I want to, and oh man, especially when it's hero related, because then I get all like, ooh, because it's my work. And let's see if the guys. I'm a little proud of it. I think the uh, the guys are uh, absolutely updating as quick as they can. I know Jack, oh, Jack, and the team in Paris. Oh, there's Steve. There's Steve. He chatting. Oh, Doc is unlocked. Oh, Doc is unlocked. He says so. Ah, oh, thanks, Steve. <laughs> yes. So this is our French legionnaire uh, uh, oui. with Trippier. with bone saw syringes. If he checked out his stretcher on his back where he's storing all of his equipment, Doc is just going to be an outstanding character. Can you give a little bit of insight about what Doc's going to be like to play? Well, yeah, I can do. I mean, no surprises here, Kate. He's a Doc, so he does heal. Um, the, uh, he's a bit of a slightly trickier one to, to, to balance, but he, because he's focused on healing his teammates. So when they're getting shot to bits or not, depends on how well you've been playing, he's there to patch them up. So uh, he's spending more of his time with healing as well as killing, so he's trying to mix mm -hmm. his, his roles a little bit. He's still very good at that pistol of his. He's wielding a pistol and a, and a saw or a knife, uh, depending on how he feels. And yes, he's, uh, he's a, bit of a bit of a support character. So he'll give out buffs to people with defensively. He'll heal them. He'll prevent people taking wounds. Um, so he's really crucial in a firefight, having him there. And he's quite tough himself. Oh. He's, uh, because he's the medic, everyone's trying to protect him. So he has an ability that's currently called Guardian, 
uh, or, guard, or uh, yeah, guardians. And basically, as long as he's with people on this tile, he gets more dice to roll on the fence. Yeah. So he's quite tough. Everyone's trying to pull him out of the way. He's like, get, mm-hmm. off, get over here. And he's like, stop <laughs> pulling me around. And, but in being saved, he's pretty, quite tough. And then when he gets a few shots off, you know, he kills a few zombies, and then he heals up, uh, you know, Claudine after she's been bitten a few times. So he's both preventing damage and healing he's whenever a, he's it gets. He's an interesting to... mix. He's yep. a very different playstyle to the core five, who are more about just killing everything and sneaking around. He's making sure they don't die while doing that. So he's very important to the mm-hmm, team. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, yeah, I'm enjoying playing him at the moment. We are currently, yeah, got him on the table back in the office. Love it. Yeah, Love it. He's cool. Um, Eddie asked the question, I must know what's the chance of a Kickstarter exclusive Pineapple Warren card, that's Warren from Beast of War for anybody who hasn't watched the Let's Play, and an anti-Pineapple As card. <laughs> After watching the Beast of War play through, I feel these things are needed. So if you haven't watched it, the Beast of War Let's Play involved a lot of Warren playing as Sarge, wanting to blow things up the moment we get in the front door, and a lot of me trying to talk Warren out of blowing things up the moment we get in the door. Um, what are the chances? There's always a chance. We, we like little uh, fun things like that. I was getting some feedback from that event, and uh, I just couldn't help but laughing by hearing what they were doing. It was just like, really? Really? <laughs> He's put a grenade in there? It's, yeah. We all look, yeah, possibly a Warren, an anti-Warren grid pineapple card. We'll see what Warren's opinion on that is. Um, Druid says, why are you killing my wallet? Thanks for making cool stuff. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> we don't want to kill your wallet. We want to nurture it and give it a good place to enjoy itself. It's gone to a good place. Well, at least the contents have. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Enzo says, just a single new mission for Project X, it would seem the Big Brute would have more replay value than a single additional mi- mission. Will more missions be v- made available online? So the thing is, if you look at the Project X expansion, yes, as, as exactly as you've called out there, it comes with, with one mission, but it comes with some extra uh, unit. It comes with his unit card, and it comes with some, if you look, three modular raid mission cards as well. So it's one campaign mission that introduces him into the storyline world, but his raid cards will also be available so you can essentially add him into anything that you want. He'll become part of the raid mission setup where you choose your you choose your real faction to fight against your map and your objective. So I know it again, it looks like one campaign mission, what's that about? But he'll essentially be available for any time you want to play through once we have that whole raid mission thing fleshed out. Um, let's see. People are asking about nightmare mode. Um, I think people, people are under the impression that from the Beast of War uh, video that the game's easy. Just weird. You played it. Just <laughs> guys, give it, give it a few days to unlock a few more stretch goals, and just where you see the kind of stuff the right buster is going to be facing. And then that uh, that first mission you saw was really like the tip of the iceberg. Oh, yeah. That's the right busters dealing with normal Nazi soldiers, normal officers, and, and dogs, and only starting to discover some reanimated real zombies, some tracking bombers, some experiments. We do see the experiments that haven't gone wrong, but have gone really right. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> I played three uh, paid test games today, I know, working hard, um, and out of for the three missions, only one did we get the team out intact, and that was by the skin of our teeth. So people will be, well, I'm not sure how, say how much I can say, no. but let's just say, um, you will be, yeah, it will be down to the wire. Pretty much most times. Well, yeah, well, we're going to balance everything so you you will have a challenge. There's no doubt. Don't worry. Um, nightmare mode, it's already a nightmare, especially <laughs> for tracking bombers. Um, so, Brett says, is there a way to streamline noise checks after the alarm sounds? After the alarm is the playthrough game seems to bog down. Brett nailed it to the absolute wall. One of the core bits of feedback we had from our first public demos, which were Essen, was about the noise checks, how they felt. And one of the key things we've changed mm-hmm. in current play testing, although it's not in the rulebook, and of course it's not in the gameplay videos because they were done um, some time ago now, we're splitting the noise deck into two, a pre-alarm and post-alarm. And post-alarm, any noise you make that is a noise roll of one or two, you simply ignore because it's it's so loud, the collections are going, battles are happening, loads of um, units are mobilizing on the board. So you are essentially going to see a lot of the kind of basic noise for items and doors and such, essentially you're just going to glaze right over post-alarm to help streamline and smooth that. Now that's not to say it's the only change we're going to make. We're going to keep tweaking and developing it. We have a lot yeah. more ideas for the game and we want to share this with you guys as we go on this journey. Right Busters is still going to see a bunch of development a bunch of tweaks and a bunch of new rulebook editions and versions we'll share with you guys over the coming months yeah and so with the klaxons going from the alarm going off minor noises like footsteps and squeaky doors will be 
drowned out by mm-hmm. all the rackets mm-hmm. and the gunfire. Don't forget the gunfire. The gunfire. <laughs> um, and the gunfire. And the flame floors and the rocket launchers and the real cannons and numbers. And the zombies are getting their heads blown off. And the six out ones eating floating. Um, quite a few questions about an art book. Um, we're open to it. We're always open to the suggestions. You know that we had art books um, for, for Joan of Arc. We obviously we did include an art book for Solomon Cain. It's something we can look at. It depends on demand. Again, it depends on you guys. It's something we can kind of look at. At the moment, it's not in plan though. So if it's something you would very much like, pop it in the Kickstarter comments so we can kind of see it there and we'll kind of gauge the interest. And we want to support you guys who, who love the art and the game. The great thing about this is because we have Guillaume Ponjolupi doing all the evil, nefarious, dark looking real masters and the Nats units. And then we've got Catalan L'Artiste who's doing all the kind of comic, heroic looking, brave, clean lines of the heroes mixed in with other artists like Bayard Wu and then Stefan Gantes doing some of our work as well. We have, a, again, a huge plethora of art for the game that, we, again, we haven't even really begun to, to break through the walls all at all. We're going to have a lot of that to share with you guys. Painting tutorials. Um, well, we now have Seb Levine on staff. But I have a list of stuff for Seb Levine to paint as long as my arm. <laughs> um, yeah. Again, it's another thing. Hello, Tom, a.k.a. the original Timmy. You're in a good place. Thank you so much for backing. Very much welcome Hello. to you. Um, so yeah, painting tutorials are one of those things that we would love to do. We talked about with Solomon Kane, it's something that we still actually have in mind. Um, we'd love to get a studio set up in, in Paris. Um, we'd love to get this kind of setup that we have here in the UK. Um, so we can do all the fancy camera swaps and we can show out his fat fingers. We would love to do this um, in Paris as well. And that's where Seb's based. And if we could do this, um, it's something that we can you know, really get enough support um, behind yeah. right busters to maybe allow us to do that we could potentially record quite easy videos or do some lives and stuff with Seb that the world's our oyster kind of thing and um, it's something we're just going to have to look at as the campaign goes on uh, Christian welcome you're in a good place thank you for backing hello alchemy said mm-hmm. when can we expect the real masters go to go to the moon someone's been watching iron sky yeah just a little bit yeah. um well I don't know um so, yeah, so in, in, in this one, they're going to another world. Yes, they're, that's go, they're going to. You said it, I can I, say it now. You can say it. They're going well, through the Vril portal. Into an alien world. I'm going to give a small spoiler. Just th- This is a small. Go for it. Well, I'm not the one in charge. So there's a Vril portal in the not, not of this Earth expansion. You guys might have seen. But we want to explore Vril. We want to explore what Vril does in the world and the fact that, you know, what, what, where Vril comes from. Mm. You're going to see stretch goals for various different stages of that real research. So not only are the right busters going to be kind of going through the campaign missions and exploring the world, but you guys through the stretch goals and hopefully with your support in the campaign, you'll kind of see the real timeline almost come to life. You'll see some people that went through the portal. See, the first people that went through the portal didn't come back. Nope. Push, gone, Goodbye. never returned. Second mission, poof, gone, never returned. Third mission came back and were so mutated and, and pussy and blobby or they couldn't even recognize them as human anymore. But more and more missions got sent and eventually some Nazis started coming back with positive mutations. Some started coming back with completely new things that the Germans and the, the Nazis had never, ever, ever seen before. <laughs> what you're going to get to see really is the whole breadth of failure to success with mm. real experimentation because the whole thing is dangerous and nasty so you're going to get to really mess around with that any budding painters out there are going to have just a plethora of stuff to work with going to the moon that's not far enough um, the Nazis went further um, Adrina's asked a very good question which is how much of the game is language dependent just as a suggestion for language translation it uh, could be doing like uh, Awaken Realms three months delay for translation backers and, and do you know what? a big shout out to Awaken Realms we absolutely love those guys here we met with Marcin from Awaken Realms at uh, Essen he's one of the guys we spoke to about translations and getting his advice and feedback as well so it's a great call out from you um, how language dependent is the game? Uh, not really. Uh, in fact, a lot of it is, is keywords. The key thing are things like your your, your action cards. Um, mm-hmm. The action cards will have really simple iconography to show you kind of how much noise uh, and how much dice, how many dice you're rolling, how many attack you're doing. The dice will all be very straightforward. As long as you have an understanding of you know, move, uh, plus one to movement, these these kind of common game terms, the mm-hmm. game is, is, is absolutely gonna, gonna be okay for that. It's not going to really uh, be too much of a struggle. And um, if you have a, a comma, if you played a lot of games in English, board games in English, this is not going to be a stretch for you uh, at all. 
Um, will the Alliance forces always be detected after round six? It's a really interesting question. I don't know if you have any insight on this at the moment, but I know you've been messing around with the alarm tracker internally. Um, yes, yeah, so a big part of the game is the, um, the sneaking around, silencing the sentries and stuff, and you can't leave bodies and blood and guts mm -hmm. lying around the place and explosions and bullet holes. It's going to leave a trace. So the idea of the round track is basically uh, you're gonna, you're, those bodies will get discovered. You know that someone's going to find the smashed window you used to get in. So the alarm tracker will go off. Now, uh, what I uh, and the team have been experimenting with was um, having a alternating timer, which mm -hmm. might come up into an expansion. Or something we're developing is where you can change how the, long the pre-alarm and the post-alarm sections yeah. are. So you might have a longer so post-alarm. It's, it's something we can tweak in the, each individual mission. It's something we are developing at the moment. So it won't always be round six, but I say it's in development. So. I don't want to say too much yeah. in case I'm, you know, it changes. This is it. It's all very much in flux. A lot of things are possible. Nothing is, is really set in stone, is the honest answer. And Martin, welcome to the good place, sir. And Kind Hello, Schnitt Martin. says, update release dot looks ace. Thank you very much. We think he looks ace too. Uh, are, we at, are we at 200k? Oh my goodness, we're at 200k. Wait, that means uh, one. Where are we up to? Steve, update and a uh, tea, please. Yeah, a tea. Oh, Steve, <laughs> get, tea? get a cup of tea in here, buddy. So what we're going to have at 200,000, I'm just going to go ahead oh, and... Steve's that? Uh, no, come on. That's like 13 pounds. <laughs> Dollars what do you say? Oh, we can. <laughs> we can. So what we're going to have for again? These are our normal. These are the, the the core box standard Nazi soldiers in the two hundred thousand stretch goal. We are going to give you guys alternate versions of these. We're actually going to give you. If we're going to give you eight more Nazi soldiers in alternate sculpts, different versions, eight more into the core box uh, for the 200,000 stretch goal. Uh, and yeah, I know, right? Uh, 1,120 odd people watching this goal. That's additional. That's exactly, exactly right. That's a lot of viewers as well. That, that is extra, extra minis on top. Um, as a, and these, these, to be very, very clear about this, the alternate sculpts for the Nazi soldiers are Kickstarter exclusive. It's something that's going to be just be uh, for Kickstarter. It will not be in the, the retail edition. So we're nearly kind of finished on the questions. I'm just going to... Uh, um, so a quick question from Chris has said, have you guys considered reaching out to Jacob Rosalski, who did the art for Scythe? He's big into bringing recognition to the Polish side of the war. It would be cool to have him make an appearance or be a Polish character. Dude, if Jacob would want to do some work with us, absolutely be open to that. His, his artwork is stunning. Absolutely mm -hmm. stunning. Um, I don't know, do, right, Buster's season two, do we need to have, um, we need to go back in time a little bit further? Because this is already at the end of the war. This is just as the Allies are about to win that the real Mousers are going to hopefully bring their tech to the front line so they want to turn the tide of the war right at the end. Maybe we need to go back in time a little to the start of, of the, the Weird World War II and explore that and maybe Jacob would be a great person to do that with. Get Jacob to get in touch with us, absolutely. Oh, I just remember the, the playing title. We, I think we, we joked about it at one point. Was it Back to the Fuhrer? Back to the Fuhrer <laughs> <laughs> was... Um, <laughs> Back to the Fuhrer well, was, was, was the one. around the a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, hey, Jacob, give us a call, buddy. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we very much... Um, are open to tech and right busters really all over the place. I want a submarine base. I want an Antarctic base. What I really want is Nazis in the 80s. I want, I want Guns N' Roses uh, nice. done time travel style as real and feared, like empowered rockers. Uh, I want to. Uh, I want to see spandex. Well, I want to see minis with spandex, man. Real monsters on rollerblades or skates. Um, yeah, yeah. Push themselves on their little claws. You heard oh, it here no, first. What have I done? You heard it here first. That's amazing. <laughs> um, spandex. I always knew you were twisted ass. <laughs> says Andrew Cox. Just be glad you don't never, see me. You never know. <laughs> Stop that. Don't share my spandex. My stat spandex love. Um, is there going to be a one versus all mode? Ray, there is not. Right Busters is going to be. Right Busters Project Vril <laughs> is definitely going to be a 100% cooperative game. All the heroes either lose or win together. <laughs> End of. But if you want to keep track of who kills the most Nazis, we won't stop you and have bragging rights. Yes, there's absolutely a... Uh, you opened that door and you didn't kill shit. <laughs> I'm going to go in and do the job for you. There's definitely a feeling of one-upmanship in it, right? Especially when I'm playing. People always go, oh, Eddie, done it again. Stop <laughs> kicking down the doors. And I'm just like, <laughs> the trail of bodies and Nazis chasing me through the base. This is it. 
Um, let's see, I'm gonna quickly look through any more questions that we missed. Right, any questions guys, get them spammed into chat now. Go, 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 questions in chat, and we're gonna wrap this up, and we're gonna to have to pass off to Mr. Leonidas Vesperini. Right. So, Rope out of dice said, yes, I'm trying. Let me send Leo a message it's and a say, nice dice. They are get, you get ready, time. Leo? Is everyone's hair ready to be outshone? I'll roll out back Steve. Uh, <laughs> textured bases. Yes, no one, everyone. There will be textured bases. Uh, I noticed the ones you're showing don't have. Yes, these, you're exactly right, King of Average. The ones we're showing here, which I'll just pop under very quickly. Bonk. These were, oh, oh, so oh you really tried. You were this, you, so you had a 50-50 choice. Just look at the minis. <laughs> yes, you're exactly right, King of Average. Uh, Michael, these minis are 3D prints that we did early copies. We have to, since decided to add textured bases uh, to, to everything, essentially. And um, so all, all minis will come with texture bases, even though these ones are showing as, as, oh, as plain. A scientist. That is a real scientist. He's yeah. hugging that, that yeah. vril. He loves his vril. He loves his vril. Hello, <laughs> hello, uh, Boris. <laughs> Welcome to the good place. Um, any chances of a fifth and sixth player expansion? Um, I can tell you guys right now, essentially what you see on the page is, is, is in terms of the pledge levels of what we're really offering. You're gonna have to just keep up with the campaign to see what is still gonna be added into there. Um, oh my God, so many people to welcome to the good place. It's fantastic. Um, is Vril a race, a culture, the name of a planet or all of the above? Vril, oh, I don't wanna go into this too. We're gonna have a live where we really get into Vril more, but Vril is this energy source. We, we, you know, we kind of call it miraculous because it does things that nothing else in the world absolutely mm. can that can be harnessed to heal, to destroy, to rend matter. The key is though, that Vril is not of this earth, it's not of this planet. No. It's natural habitat is actually on the other side of the Vril portal, which the Nazis don't actually know exactly where that planet is, but as you'll see from the Not of This Earth expansion, if you look at those alien races, I can tell you, we're gonna talk about it lots more in the future, but I can tell you, the aliens have a much easier time manipulating Vril than yeah. humans do. And they use Vril almost like the same way we use food, I guess. Yeah. Energy, uh, relentless energy drinks maybe a better example. Yeah, <laughs> and if you go back to watch the trailer again, uh, at the very beginning when Sarge opens that crate, you'll see those little red canisters in yeah, there. Yeah, and that's can... essentially the Vril power cells. Now, if I send you across this little dude, uh, he's, he's very happy uh, with his real um, energy sources on yeah. his back. You can see he's got two of them on each shoulder. Uh, that's essentially what's feeding into him. You see there's the zombie, there's one there. He's got one powering them up at the back. So that's their, their power source. That's where they're getting their uh, real energy from. This is, what, this is what the Nazis are having to do to harness yes. the power. Bonk, sticking it on the and uh, off they go. But if you guys look at the Not of This Earth expansion, if you scroll down the page between our lives, you'll see that there's some units in there that don't have those real infused energy packs because they don't need them because they've maybe been successful in coming back through the portal or they've been successful with experiments and they're gonna be villains that are not just using drill weapons but are infused with drill. And on the tabletop, gameplay-wise, it's gonna add very, very different elements to the table. Uh, carry on the conversation on Discord and the official Mythic Games channel, Jiren. That is far more professional than we have been all evening. Very nice shout out, sir. Will there be moments where the map will be randomly generated? David, you're gonna have to just kind of follow along. Can't, mm. can't give too much. We've had a lot of questions about, will you explore? Will it be like a dungeon delver where you reveal tiles as you go? Initially, that's not the current plan we do with the core game, but that's not to say we can't explore those kind of ideas. Um, I'm gonna quickly look through any final questions. Do you plan to send any minis to painters for painting tutorials? And um, we did do that for Solomon Kane. We did actually give away a few Right Busters minis at Mythic Day to our painting competition winners. Um, it's something that we're very open to do. If you want to drop me an email at as at mythicgames.net with your portfolio of some of your work, we can absolutely look at it. It's at the moment, unfortunately, due to the nature of just how much content's in Right Busters, um, we only have two copies of the game in the world. One here in the UK and one in the Paris office and that is it. So um, getting copies out to people is something that's quite a big challenge for a game which has this breadth of, of miniatures and content in just the core box. Um, hey. How can I get an autograph from oh, the nice young man in the glasses? The <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> get back to work. Um, I think if you send a stamped addressed envelope <laughs> to I can sign Ed, a GR if you want Ed to. Fan Club, 
Um, <laughs> how long till we get a Leo Mini? Oh, I love it. Absolutely. So many Leo Minis. Um, possibibly for a dice add-on. Well, the hope is, Brett, that you won't need any extra dice. The dice that will come with the game will give you everything that you need um, to be able to play. So, um, I don't really think there's going to be a need for a dice add-on. I'm doing my best to make sure you don't go over the six. Um, will you bring in uh, Liza the She-Wolf of the SS? Um, we do like we do like to uh, take little hints and tidbits from history, but we, we generally are coming up with our own exciting stuff rather than kind of copying exact characters. So Wait, Giselle would become close. Giselle is kind of she's mm, a yeah. ferocious woman. Um, so um, King of Irons, yes, hit finding out that I have to reroll dice and games because well enough. Yes, it's it's a tough one. If you just like dice, Brett. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one, unfortunately. Um, well, as I've tried to do with the decks is give them the option to... Well, if I show you uh, one of the cards for, say... Oh. Let's throw out a couple of... Oh, oh. I know. Oh. Put that one into the mix. Put this one into the mix. So, to counteract the need to re-roll or even the, not the necessary dice rolling is... If you see oh. at the bottom, we've got the uh, modifier tactical. And that is a guarantee, just play it down, that is a star result. That's uh, what we use to trigger special abilities or to explode the dice and roll again. So uh, I've put into these decks in a way to basically ensure that you, even if you roll bad, you can still put down the damage, you can still put the hits <laughs> in there. So uh, I've been kind, I like to think, <laughs> in trying to mitigate some of that randomness and kind of like to plan and build a deck in front of you to basically kill the Nazis as best as possible. There's, yeah, there's going to be ways to, to plan, and, that, and that's the key. Mm -hmm. And you'll be encouraged to take some risky dice rolls while still having the option to kind of recover from your terrible mistakes. Yeah. And that's what the likes of the heroic points are really good for, because you can use these to, to retcon your mistakes. Yes, if so you, that's another crucial part. You know, the, these are a great part of the game. Mm -hmm. So look, we're going to wrap this up. Leo is going to be live in about, I think, about 20 minutes from now. I'll answer a couple of quick questions that I'm seeing repeated quite a bit. So how do, does the raid system work? The raid mission. So you will have a deck of map layouts, you will have a deck of mission objectives, and you'll have a deck of Nazi factions, of real factions, uh, real Meister factions, and you will either choose one card from each or randomize a card from each um, to generate a, a unique uh, raid mission. And there's gonna be lots of these different combinations, so you can have a different experience every time you play with the raid. You'll see that as we unlock more stretch goals, the, their options are going to expand even further. If you do get expansions, those will also add those map, those objective, and those faction uh, cards into the raid missions as well to give you even more variety. So the raid missions are the key way to play the game. Every time you sit down, you choose those. Then you also get to choose your hero, your right buster's team setup that will customize exactly how the team feel to, so you have this kind of unique experience mm. before you then choose from the many different heroes that we hope to have in the game. I'm sorry. I'm. Sp I get quite excited. I'm speaking quite. Oh no! Quite I can't wait for yeah. we sit down later <laughs> in the week and talk about the heroes. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm itching to get on with it because. Uh, Oh yeah, I've loved working on these. But, um, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> in the campaign <laughs> missions then, so in the core box you have seven campaign missions plus the Kickstarter exclusive O'Reilly mission that will be an additional uh, kind of subplot to that campaign. You also have additional campaign missions that will be added through the expansions. But if you play with just the core box, you will have a full six mission campaign which will tell the narrative story of Project Vril and how the Reich Busters kind of delve into that world throughout subsequent missions. And the campaign missions will have knock-on effects depending on, on what you do and the outcomes of what you do mission to mission. So there's potential ramifications for your actions or the things you do success or fail. Uh, just a quick apology to. Uh, no, I know. I yeah, I know. Right it, yeah. I do. I get excited. No, it was. It was. I think it was directed at me initially. I speak quickly, um, and so does Az. We're just. We're very excited. So Leo's <laughs> going to be on in about twenty minutes or so. Um, to talk so if any of you would like to answer, ask questions in French please do so you can join us there if you look on the FAQ there's 25 FAQ questions um, currently uh, you want to see <laughs> currently available so a lot of the questions will be answered in there if you need something to read uh, between now and Leo going live um, do, do, do. so yes the, in the core box alone there'll be six campaign missions but the raid mission mode is going to give you this way to replay every single time with different maps, with 
different opponents uh, with different um, objectives each time. So you're going to get a really mm -hmm. unique experience every time you sit down to play. But the narrative, we're very happy just to have it be, be that length of time. Um, are the lives going to be uh, archived? So two things, Kickstarter should hopefully save this, um, but we are also recording it ourselves over in the corner, so we should be able to get uh, either a link or a YouTube video shared in a future update so you can rewatch these. Absolutely, we, we, we plan on doing that, we're just going to work out what's best. Um, will you consider releasing templates for raid cards so people can make their own and put them on places like Board Game Geek? Yes, and that's actually a great question for another reason, Mike. What we would like to do uh, with, with, with Rag Busters, because we had difficulty obviously looking at further languages, we would like to make the assets available for the rulebook and for the cards and for a number of the, the, the components that would use translation so people can either you can make your own cards by all means, but more likely what we'd love people to do is to potentially translate versions of the rules that we can then release as downloadable documents for people to get for free from our website. So we do plan that once we get further on into the project and more of the components become finalized to share those templates for people to use. Um, there will not be a scenario editor. There's a lot of work in designing something like a, a scenario editor. It's not something that we can just, you know, it kind of just create out of nothing, I'm afraid. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys can see, give me another kind of couple of cards. Give me a spawn card um, and, a, and a hero card. So again, we'll show you guys a couple so of- hero Yeah, or yeah, one of the action cards, anyone at all. Uh, yeah, what, and give me one of the other ones. Give me, give me his next card. So just, you know- Boy, Jove. So here's an example of a few cards. So here is a Nazi spawn card. So you can see these are really just names of units. So these are very straightforward things that will relate to, to minis and units in the game. Uh, we then have a Quentin uh, action card, which has an action in the top or a modifier in the bottom. So again, the text, as you can see, is very gameplay orientated. It's pretty straightforward. And then we also have Quentin's feet, which gives you some, again, clear iconography and very simple, clean. So again, nothing too complex in terms of the text on the cards. Now, the one thing that we do currently have some text on, but these are being kind of worked on consistently, um, are the noise cards. So these have currently been split into two decks in our future play testing. But here we go, we have subdued sound. You manage to stop the noise before it gets too loud. Then we have the threshold and the two potential outcomes, whether you're post or pre-alarm, sorry, or post-alarm. But this is currently being worked on to split them into different decks. What is staying actually, if you just put those mm -hmm. two side by side, is oh, you yeah. will notice um, on the sound alarm, uh, so the bottom half of the sound card on the right has got the numbers three, two, one. It's an example, but you will see how those will correlate to the numbers on the Nazi mm -hmm. spawn cards. So in that bottom example, it's pretty terrifying. You would get in that case zombies, Nazi soldiers, and tracking bombers. All that would come through the doors of various spawns. Yep. So you can see how they start to populate the map from the different spawn locations, usually from barracks. So on this layout, we've got barracks there and there and there and on the table <laughs> I'm excitable um, and they would have all come pouring in from these directions so it keeps the board populated and all these guys flowing in keeping the pressure on so yeah um, it's going to be something which will be kept uh, into the post alarm yeah but the card the cards are going to be relatively straightforward so if it, even if English is not your primary language the iconography that you'll see on them will be pretty straightforward, but we will release the templates with the fonts, absolutely, um, so people can translate these and they can be community driven. And if we find rule books mm. and sets of the cards that, that have um, words that people want to translate, and we find good versions that the community are happy with, we will put them on mythicgames.net on the download section available for people to have, because we are going to have uh, Joan of Arc stuff on there, we're going to have Solomon Cain stuff on there, and also Rag Busters to come. Um, is noise still relevant when the alarm has rung? Yes, it absolutely is. It causes Nazi units to spawn from barracks for them to get more reinforcements and they'll start to kind of swarm the exits and protect the guard points that will actually stop the heroes from being able to exit. The guard points are the areas that are key to a mission objective, that are key to the exits and entrances, that are places where the, the Nazis want to prevent the right busters from spending time. So yes, the noise is very relevant post alarm, despite the fact that in play testing we're now ignoring noise one and noise two post alarm to smooth out that second half of the game a little bit. Um, okay, 
yes, we will give the name of the fonts for making the cards. I can't tell you it right now, but when we get to that stage, we will. Please keep in mind that Right Busters at the end of the 10 days will not be a finished product. We will keep expanding it. We will keep developing it and sharing those updates with you guys as, as we go through. And once we have everything finished, at that point we can look to template because there'd be no point in us giving you things before they're finished. Now I've asked quite a few times about uh, the font type. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. yeah as, yeah. So, um, ba -ba -bam. will it be possible to make the hero decks evolve through the campaign? It's not something we're currently doing, but key is that you could see your items and things available in the research and development evolve depending on what you do. Yes. Um, yeah. I don't want to go too much detail because things are still being developed. Um, so yes, it's something we could possibly look into. Maybe ha maybe abilities will start to. Uh, you know, you can get, gain a few more abilities to make you a bit more powerful or specialise in other areas. Mm -hmm. That could be something that we are, you know, possibly looking to at some point in the future. But right now, we're still focusing on a few other areas. But uh, yes, uh, it will be. You know, items will be kind of continued across campaigns. Missing heroes that get captured will be missing for future campaign missions. So it, the campaign will evolve as you go along. You know, if you didn't succeed in one campaign mission, it will affect the next one, kind of thing. Uh, but it's all still development. So. Mm -hmm. um, just keep an eye on the, on the game development and uh yeah it's funny that some of the suggestions i'm seeing are, are things we've actually play tested and removed and since toyed around with one example we had there was be interesting to have a mechanic about leaving dead bodies behind and being found by patrolling units <laughs> we actually we did work with blood splatters and pools and kind of tracks yes, for a while very um, early on but i think what we ended up doing was trying to invoke a far more heroic and speed and timely game where you're having to open doors and deal with threats quickly before they raise the alarm and the the first half of the game the reason there's more rounds is because the sneaking if you do it well can make up most of the game you can get say 60 percent 70 percent of your way to completing the mission maybe even further if you're really good yeah on our, on our best playthroughs and play testing we've cleared the objective room um on the final turn of the pre-alarm phase yep. clearing us to get in there and start searching as the alarm goes off so it's all down to your your ability to well not trigger the noise, using your card deck to kind of efficiently kill off as many Nazis as possible, and also not to make some silly choices, mm -hmm. usually caused by myself. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. Steve, again. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a, every, every game play is different. You know, I've never had the same game twice. You know, if something worked the first time, I've messed up the second time. Um, so there's a lot of replayability in it. You, you know, you weren't successful the first time, or you had to run for your lives. Maybe the next time would be different, take a different route different zombie patrols or Nazi patrols mm -hmm. appear. It, you know, there's a lot of replayability and because you know, you, you, you're changing the factions you're facing, yep. the layout, the map's gonna change, there's gonna be a lot of variation and, you know, and the heroes as well. Yep. Each hero's gonna bring a new uh, you know, way to play to the table. I mean, with the doc himself, you know, he's a healer. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna be killing as many. So he's gonna change the way the mission unfolds yep. as well. Um, so there's a lot to play around with. You know, so many yep. combinations of heroes and Nazis and boards and missions. You'll be, you'll be kept busy for hours. It's and when, hours it's, and days yeah. and it's when you mix the dock with the sarge. You can just throw grenades willy nilly and keep healing them back up. It'll be good yeah, fun. Just drop grenades on yourself. Um, I recommend yeah. it. But, uh. <laughs> uh, welcome, Krabby, uh, and very much welcome to everyone else who's joined and backed during the campaign uh, during this live. Johan as well. Very much welcome to the good place, everybody. Thank you so much for for joining us. <laughs> We're going to wrap this up now. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I've had a lot of questions. We will make these uh, reviewable. We'll put out the link um, or the YouTube channel, the link or the YouTube video, whichever it may be, in a future update where you can catch it. Um, thank you so much. Leo should be live in about 10 or 15 minutes. So again, if you have any more questions, he'll also have more minis to show because they've been working very hard in the Parisian office. Thank you. Honestly, honestly, thank you. Look, uh, I'll turn this around so you can see a bit more. Thank you so much for, for coming and, and, and for chatting, guys. It's just been... Yeah. Really, really incredible. Where are we finishing? We're at 213,000 oh, already. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> I just want to talk about it all. <laughs> there are many more heroes that we're looking forward to unlocking. Um, good night, everybody. Uh, good night. Or good day to those on the, the Gold to Coast or to well. Australia. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's been awesome having you here. Now, look, tradition dictates, if you're willing to get involved, that as I go over there to turn all this off, I genuinely need some music provided by my guests. Um, okay, well, <laughs> so you can, you can have a think 
<laughs> Thank you, everybody. Precious Goodbye. Time. Welcome to the Good Place. Start uh, sharing on Facebook some ideas for Good Place badges and for secret passwords for the Good Place treehouse. I want to. I want to hear some ideas. What can? What could, We need to work on a secret handshake. We need to work on some code words. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to make the Good Place something that you have to really, really the special. More puns, the better. Yeah, come and join us on Discord as well. Hello, Bree. Bree wants you to sing. Oh, danger. Sing for us. Danger. Um, well, I was thinking humming, I'll but take okay. I'll requests. What, what do we need to sing? As he leaves. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye. I'm going to run over there and Good turn night, everything guys. Thanks off. Thanks to all 1,100 of you. It's uh, fantastic for you all to join us. And, oh, I'm supposed to be singing. Oh, as where are you going? Why are you leaving me over here? <laughs> um, don't, don't sing too late, Steve. You love it when I sing. <laughs> Say goodbye, Ed. Bye, Ed. I mean, bye, guys. <laughs>